Welcome to Science with Father, a YouTube channel dedicated to sharing science with you in a fun and interactive way. Enjoy! <laughs> Albert and I are going to introduce you to Newton's third law by showing you how a rocket works. Fire away, Bobbert! Oh no! We forgot to open the garage door! In order to apply Newton's third law, two objects are needed. The law pretty much states that when object A pushes on object B with some force, object B always pushes back with the exact same amount of force. Now this may seem odd, but think about walking across the ground. The force exerted by your foot is the exact same force just opposite in direction as the force exerted by the ground. The force of the foot has to equal the force exerted by the ground. And we know from Newton's second law that force equals mass times acceleration or F equals MA. So the mass of the foot times the acceleration of the foot has to equal the mass of the ground times the acceleration of the ground. What this equation is saying is that when our foot accelerates forward, the ground accelerates backward. That's crazy talk. I don't see the earth moving backwards when I walk across it. Okay then, let's take a closer look. We can measure the mass of the foot and the acceleration of the foot and multiply these measurements together and we will get some number. Now we have to get the exact same number when we multiply the mass of the ground times the acceleration of the ground. Since the mass of the ground is extremely large, that means the acceleration of the ground has to be extremely small to get that exact same number. The acceleration of the ground is so small, we can't even measure it, much less see it. Maybe this will be easier to see. Let's take another look at walking, but on a skateboard. What happens? Just like before, the excel just like before, the force exerted by your foot must be the same as the force exerted by the skateboard, just opposite in direction. So, the force of the foot has to equal the force of the skateboard, or the mass of the foot times the acceleration of the foot has to equal the mass of the skateboard times the acceleration of the skateboard. But this time, the mass of the skateboard is pretty much the same as the mass of the foot. So that means the acceleration of the foot is close to the same as the acceleration of the skateboard. And now we can see the acceleration of the skateboard going in the opposite direction as the acceleration of the foot. This device is called a Newton's Cradle. All the steel bearings are identical. When one is pulled out and let drop, the force is transmitted through the stationary bearings to the last bearing, and the last bearing shoots out. Likewise, when multiple bearings are pulled out, the force is transmitted through the stationary bearings. Not only does this demonstrate Newton's third law, but it also demonstrates another interesting law, the law of conservation of momentum. Notice how when two bearings are pulled out, two also bounce out. Or with three incoming, we get three outgoing steel bearings. The momentum of an object is a combination of its mass and speed. The total momentum does not change before and after an elastic collision. An elastic collision is a collision with no loss in energy. The collisions going on with the Newton's cradle 
are not perfectly elastic because we can see it slowing down. And we can hear energy being lost to generate noise. There's also energy lost to heat when the bearings collide. A Newton's cradle definitely does not keep on going forever. Energy is being lost. You may not have a Newton's cradle to demonstrate Newton's third law and the conservation of momentum. You can also use a line of coins. Dr. Smith has a line of five nickels. When he slides one nickel and strikes the line, the nickel on the end shoots out. Two nickels, two shoot out. Here is another example of the conservation of momentum. Dr. Smith has a column of four rubber balls, each on top of the other, with the heaviest on the bottom and the lightest on top. He is going to transfer the momentum from the bouncing heavier ball on the bottom to the lightest ball on the top. When the momentum gets transferred, the ball on the top goes shooting straight up. There's always friction, so some momentum is lost to that. But definitely, a lot of momentum does get transferred to the light ball. The conservation of momentum can also be illustrated with a basketball and a tennis ball. Transferring momentum from a bouncing basketball to a tennis ball is as easy as dropping them together. The great increase in speed of the tennis ball is the result of the momentum transfer from the basketball. This is an example of potential energy getting converted to kinetic energy. Dr. Smith is cutting a racquetball in half. Once done, he inverts the racquetball half and sets it on the table. There is a lot of energy in the racquetball half, now due to its position. Energy of position is referred to as potential energy. He then releases the potential energy, converting it to energy of motion, or kinetic energy, by pushing down on the sides of the racquetball. A working railgun not only converts potential energy to kinetic energy, but also takes advantage of Newton's third law to shoot a steel ball bearing using magnets. Dr. Smith is going to use a total of 13 steel ball bearings, two 24-inch long, half-inch inner diameter PVC pipes, tape measure, four neodymium magnets, electrical tape, and scissors to make his railgun. He places the PVC pipes alongside one another and attaches the first neodymium magnet six inches from the end of the combined pipes. Notice what happens when he aligns three steel bearings on one side of the magnet and rolls a fourth ball bearing toward the other side of the magnet. Potential energy gets converted to kinetic energy as the bearing increases its speed as it gets attracted to the magnet and as it travels toward the magnet. When it strikes the magnet, its momentum gets transferred to the last steel bearing which shoots off at a much faster speed than what the initial ball bearing was rolling with. A railgun takes advantage of this conversion of potential energy of the magnets to kinetic energy of a ball bearing. He is now placing a second neodymium magnet four inches from the first magnet. Check this out. This time when he rolls a bearing toward the combined magnets, the final bearing shooting out of the railgun is even faster. So now he's going to place the third and fourth magnets on the gun, separated by about four inches. The combined potential energy of the magnets converts a slowly rolling ball bearing into a bullet. To increase the power of the railgun, make sure the magnets are oriented such that they are attracting one another. You can also increase the length of the PVC tubes and separation of the magnets for increased power. 
Why does an air-filled balloon fly through the air when we let go? Do you recall Newton's third law? In this case, the stretched rubber of the balloon is object A, and object B is the air in the balloon. The rubber pushes the air out of the balloon, and the air pushes back, propelling the balloon forward. Propelling a rocket forward is also Newton's third law. In the case of a rocket, object A is the hot gases from the combustion of the rocket fuel pushing on the rocket. And object B is the rocket engine pushing back, so it gets propelled forward while the hot gases get propelled backward out the exhaust. Let's use Newton's third law to make a foam ball cannon. In order to make a cannon that shoots six inch foam balls, this is what Dr. Smith is using. A five foot long and four inch inner diameter PVC pipe. And you can use either an end cap or an adapter with a screw cap. Dr. Smith prefers the screw cap because it allows access to inside the cannon for cleaning and drying purposes. It also lets you rapidly air out the cannon between firings. Dr. Smith is working in a well-ventilated area because the fumes from the PVC primer and cement are quite strong. Dr. Smith is being sure to follow the instructions closely on applying the primer and cement to the pipe and adapter. He is now going to drill a hole roughly 12 inches from the adapter. The size of the hole matches the size of the barbecue lighter that he is going to use to ignite the vapors in the cannon. When complete, he is going to let the cannon set and ventilate overnight as a precaution. Now it's time to fire the cannon. Dr. Smith is putting a pipette full of denatured ethanol in the mouth of the cannon and quickly inserting the foam ball to trap the explosive vapors. You can also try using isopropanol. He is now adding the same amount of fuel through the ignition hole of the cannon. He is spinning the cannon around to help spread the fuel around and get it all vaporized inside the cannon. It is best to wait a couple minutes to ensure all the fuel is vaporized. If you use isopropanol or rubbing alcohol, you may want to wait a little bit longer. Dr. Smith is making sure the cannon is well secured and not going to hit anyone. When he pulls the trigger on the barbecue lighter, the volatile fumes inside the cannon will ignite and greatly expand, blowing out the foam ball from the cannon. Let's review. 
Newton's third law requires two objects. When object A pushes an object B, object B pushes back with the exact same amount of force. The momentum of an object is a combination of its mass and speed. During collisions, momentum can be transferred from one object to another. Only in elastic collisions is the total momentum the same before and after the collision. Kinetic energy is the energy of motion, while potential energy is the energy of position. When potential energy gets converted to kinetic energy, speed increases.